all right so in the last tutorial we have seen that how we are able to launch a url or open a browser and then launch a url using selenium library and robot framework and we've also seen how to close browser or multiple browsers right so now we need to see what type of elements do we have on a web page and how to access those elements so anything that is present on a web page a button or a link or anything that is known as a web element and we have these types of elements present on a web based application or a web page so the first type of element is a text box right so you must be familiar with your login screens where you have username and password where you can enter something so that is a text box object links you are very much familiar if you go to google and type something and search for results you see hyperlinks so that comes under link okay so on click of that you would be able to redirect to some other page so the next type is button we generally see a lot of buttons like like submit buttons login buttons on our web pages so that is very common images we see a lot of images on our web application check boxes generally look like this and you can click on it to select the item and if you click it again it would be unchecked so these are generally for user preferences where we, we can select multiple or single elements right so the next one is text area it is not like text box because text box is smaller one text area gives you flexibility to add more text and it is generally bigger in size so you need to see the tag name in html to identify whether that is a text box if that is an input tag then that would be text box if it is text area it would be having the tag text area the next one is list box which appears like this and it allow you to select items from a list you can scroll down left or right to see the elements and you can do multiple or single selection based on the type of list box so that is kind of a thing where you have multiple options and you need to select out of those options okay so we have seen so far we have talked about text boxes where we can type something we have seen links where we have text and a hyperlink which we can click and then we can navigate to some other pages we have talked about check boxes and we also spoke about text area and list boxes so far we are yet to cover four different types combo box radio button web table and frames right so combo boxes are very similar to list boxes they have kind of similar purpose but it appear like a simple text box with a arrow on the right side when you click on it only then it expands and show you all the options okay so that is the difference between combo box and list box list box appears like already open list combo box opens all the elements only when you click on that arrow okay so that is the difference between combo boxes and list boxes and we'll see how to automate these two different things okay next is radio buttons so when we have choices and we ask user to select one element from the list of choices we generally use radio buttons check boxes are generally used when we ask for multiple preferences so if user can have multiple options they go with check boxes if we want that user can select only one element from the list of options then we have radio buttons for example male and female user can select only one out of them okay next is web tables so we see a lot of tables on the pages where we represent our data so for that we have web tables and we'll be also talking about frames so frame is something which we cannot see visually because these are present in the html structure so we'll be talking more about frames because at times it become difficult to handle frames but we'll be deep diving how to select frames and how to perform actions on different elements on frames all right so now we know the types of web elements we have now it is time to understand what type of actions we can perform on a web page right so when we access our google.com or facebook.com we generally perform a lot of operations we do login so at that time we access the text boxes we we type text into them and we click on buttons we see a lot of images we read from the elements right so these are the types of operations that we perform right while automation also will be doing these sort of actions we will be typing we will be clicking we will be reading some text we will be selecting from the list or combo boxes we will be doing mouse overs drag and drops we will be performing mouse actions 
um, like mouse hover and we'll be performing keyboard actions like arrow keys and something like that and also along with that we'll be doing a lot of other operations for navigation for example opening browser that we have seen in the past video and the closing of browser and also we'll be talking about navigation backward navigation forward and all those things right so these are the types of actions that we can perform on a web page okay so now talking about the main subject of this video which is object identification so to perform various actions on various elements of the web page we need to identify those elements uniquely on that web page and that technique is known as object identification so to identify elements on a web based application for example this is the test application that i have created just for automation so you just need to go to developer tools first of all to see the html part of it and once you understand the html you will be able to identify the elements as well so if i quickly walk you through the html and if i collapse it right so you would be seeing that in this html it starts with html tag it ends with html tag and we have head tag and body tag so if i mouse over to it you see that it selects all the elements of the page so all the elements which are visible on the page which you can see on the page these all are actually a part of body and something like title of the browser these uh, things come under head right there are other meta tags and scripting which are av available in head tag but anything which you want to automate is available in the body part okay so now if you want to see any element attributes or any element source code on the html what you need to do is you need to see that element here and then you need to click here on the inspector tool that we have in the developer tools which is available on the left hand side so you click on it and then click on that element which you want to inspect so if you click on it you would be able to see that piece of code in your window right so here is the element which we are talking about it is input tag with id as mentioned here and class like this and it is type text and the name is also given so you would be seeing all these types of things here uh, while you are exploring about the html source and one point to note here is that it has input as a tag name it has id name type these all are attributes and anything which is present in between as text would be the inner text of it okay so like this we'll be studying all these elements one by one and then we'll be able to locate these elements using different techniques okay so this is how we would be analyzing the various elements on the page and we would be having various element identification techniques to perform actions on those elements okay so the first identification technique is id right and the example that you can see here is while using robot framework you need to put it like this id colon and that id value okay so i go back to the source code where we have launched the browser and here instead of google.com we'll put the url of our web application and let us say we want to use chrome so i pass this second argument as chrome okay so by this we would be able to launch a chrome window and in that window we would be able to launch this url okay so once that url is open once that application is open i need to let's say check the existence of one of the elements on the page so for that we have a function which is page should contain element page should contain is a different keyword you need to use page should contain element and it asks for a locator locator is nothing but the selector okay so that technique that we were talking about you need to put here so i use id and colon and then you need to put the id so you go back to your html of the application copy that id and put it here so if that element is uniquely available on that page this test case would pass otherwise it will fail so you can see that it is opening the browser it has opened the application and it won't close it because we have not used close browser function and you can check here it has one test case passed and if i open the log again here we can see that once we expand the test case report so it has tc1 in that it has opened the browser and it has checked whether that element is present or not so it says that it contains that element so our test case is passed 
and we are able to use our first locator strategy which is id okay now let us talk about the second locator text strategy or locator technique that is using names so instead of id we would be using names so i go back to the application and here if i see that it also has an attribute named as name okay not all the elements would be having all these attributes you need to see what all attributes are present and based on that you need to see which strategy you can use so now let's say we want to use names so the syntax is simple you need to use name colon and then the name value okay you can see this example here now let us run it again and this time we have also used close all browsers so our browser window would be closing once it detects whether that element is present uniquely or not okay so it is launching the application and it has closed it that means that second step has already been executed and you can check one test passed and it says that it contains that element okay so we have seen how to identify using id and name the third locator technique is using identifiers so identifier uses id or name okay so you need to use identifier instead of id or name and then you can give value of any of these two okay you can either put the id name or the name value and that would also work okay so we can try the same example that we have used before and instead of id or name we will be putting identifier and in the value we can use value of any of these two either name or id okay and it would be working as it was working earlier so it launched the application and then it validated and then it closed the browser so you can see the test case passed and this strategy also worked fine the next technique is using class classes are not the recommended strategy because classes are generally not unique and more than one element uses same class let us see in this example we need to see whether that class is unique and if it is unique only then it would be good to use this option otherwise it is recommended that you use either id or you use name or if both of these are not available then you go with some other techniques like xpath and css okay so let us see in this case if we have it unique we can check here in the section and it if it gives you only one element which you can check here on the right side one of one then it would be uniquely present on the page and then you can use it here so again if you want to use class you need to use class colon and then the value now we need to see one case here that our class values are having spaces in between that means this element is using multiple classes so first class is w site form input second class is w site input third class is the last text that we have here okay so if you run it you would see that this test case would fail because in case of single class if we don't have any spaces we can copy as it is but if we have spaces in between you would see that your test case would fail and it would give you error that page should contain that value as a class okay but it is not present and the test case failed so what you need to do is you need to replace all the spaces with dots so if you have multiple classes you need to separate them with a dot you need to replace all the spaces with dot okay now if you run it again you would see that this test case would pass this time so it says that current element is present and the test case is passed so the next strategy is tag name okay so tag names again are not recommended that you use only the tag names because again this won't give you the unique element certain tags are unique for example h1 tag h2 tag generally not more than one or two elements have these tags but yes you need to validate whether it gives you unique result or not before using it so we try this thing on the body tag because that is for sure going to be unique on one frame application we will be talking about frames later but uh, generally that is unique so i use tag as body and in this case our test case should pass so when we run it you see that this one passes okay 
Moving on to the next strategy which is x path. So we need to give expression. Now we need to understand a lot of rules before we jump into x path. And there is another similar technique which is CSS path which is CSS selector also. For these two techniques you need to understand a lot of rules. And in the next two tutorials we will be talking about these rules. And once you are comfortable with x path and CSS. You can either use XPath or CSS if you are not able to find elements using any of the other element strategies that we have discussed so far because not all the elements would be having all these attributes. So in such cases where we don't have these helping attributes where we don't have names, IDs or classes or tag names are also not giving us unique element. So for that we will use XPath or CSS selectors and we will be deep diving more into it in the next tutorial.